Well, let me let me just kind of unspool here a little bit about my opinion on the difference between pornography and naked art. And then I would love you as an artist to kind of help me kind of flesh this out a little bit, right? Because, um, you know, the word pornography entered the English language in the mid 19th century it comes from two Greek words, which means the writing or drawing of the prostitutes. And it's clear that the the kind of creators, the producers of pornography mean for their product to interact with the consumer in the way that a prostitute would. So pornography is always meant to be a substitute for a prostitute. You know, I was just thinking like in this crazy lockdown time that we're in, if you were a prostitute and had to work online, what would that look like? Well, it would be pornography because yeah. I think one of the primary maybe the only notable difference between pornography and prostitution is that there is a camera in the room. Um, but with naked art, it's something altogether different. You know, you don't find people sort of being tempted to masturbate in the Sistine Chapel. You don't find them going to some beautiful art museum and 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 finding that temptation. And yet you see the body and all of its beauty, the breasts and the genitals, and it, this is all lovely. And it seems like, though, you're being drawn into an interior world. There's, mm. there's something going on. There is a complexity and interiority to the person. Um, whereas, I mean, I don't. I, I yeah. tend to be not on. I'm not on the on this. Let's say I. I don't mind the fact that nudity exists in the art, but it's it's definitely to me like when nudity started to reintegrate art. Let's say in the during the Renaissance and later, it seemed to me like it's a. It was a. A strange pagan move. Oh, really? Uh, because if you if you read the if you read the early councils when they they accepted images in the church, and when you read how the church fathers talk about one of the reasons why icons look the way they do is because Roman art was erotic. Roman art was extremely erotic, and so what the Christians did is they took the Roman forms and they. If you look at the figures, they're using Roman tropes. Everything about iconography is based on Roman tropes. The, the you know, the 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 fold, the clothing, mm -hmm. every the poses, even the contrapposto, all of this comes from Roman statuary and Roman painting. But it was de-eroticized. And so the all the figures are covered, and then the contrapposto is adjusted slightly so that it's not as sensual. So all of it, there's like a and you can read, I think it was he's even uh Saint Basil, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Sure. But one of the fathers talked about how, you know, the the images that are represented in the church have to be not to not to attract attention to your desires. Like they need to be they need to have a sobriety to them so that you're not tempted by them. Um, and so I do think that because like in the Sistine Chapel, you even the Sistine Chapel now it's been restored, but it didn't take long for the nuns to paint thing vines over the over the genitals. Which were you know, removed they, now they've been removed, by John Paul but, II, which I thought was that's cool that we disagree on this because I think that I, I think I disagree with you on that. I yeah. think that I mean, whatever we might say of Christian tradition and the fathers and their opinions, I mean, the, the argument that that one would make uh, would be that the body can be portrayed in a way uh, that is decent and good or not. And so, would your argument be that you actually can't portray the body through drawing or painting in a way that um, I think that it, I think that the best way that I would understand that is mostly that the body or the naked body is has two aspects to it. There are two nakednesses, you could say, and those those are related to the story in Genesis. Like one is the nudity in the garden and it's the nudity in uh, the secret place where you're you're in communion with God. And then that when at the fall, that nudity gets turned into the nudity of shame and in the outside of the garden, then you cover yourself. And so I think that that duality remains the same. And so I think there is, of course, like you said, an absolute dignity and beauty and power mm -hmm. to the human body, but there's something of the altar in that in that that power. There's something of the sacredness of the body which needs to be preserved and hidden mm -hmm. uh, for the moment of the bride and the groom, like for the for the the encounter of the bride and the groom in the hidden chamber. And so that's kind of more the way that I I so, understand it. So the your idea would be that since the time of the fall, it is no longer appropriate to depict the body naked. Well, I would say that it's hard to depict it naked without the shame, and so that's why Christ was represented not fully naked on the cross, but let's say as naked as possible. And it was somewhat scandalous even when it started, Christ started to appear that way. On the cross, Christ was represented fully clothed until like the early, let's say, 
I didn't even know what the first time the I think it was in the ninth century, around the time of Charlemagne, the Christ started to appear as naked on the cross or as almost naked. And I think that it was meant to represent the nakedness of shame. It was meant to, to the, the nakedness or a way, in a way you could say joining the nakedness of shame with the nakedness in the garden in a very strange, very mm. surprising way, the way Christ unites opposites and extremes together. But but that was one of the only places where that where the kind of the body was shown was when Christ was was dead on the cross and i would say that it's mostly that it has to do with the secret it has to do with a mystical reality which is still kept you could you could say something like i imagine that in paradise we'll all be naked right like in in the kingdom maybe or clothed in glory the way the we father's talking about we won't be wearing nike we won't be wearing nike that's for sure <laughs> or clothed in glory the way the 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 uh, fathers talk about uh, the nakedness of the garden, something like that. What's your opinion on those beautiful breastfeeding Madonna icons? I, I don't know. I think I think that they, I think that they start out okay, and then they get more and more disturbing. You know, and, and by then disturbing, as, do you mean sensual, like I think leading to sexual? Yeah, definitely. I think that in the Baroque period, there is a there's a there's a kind of sensuality. Like you look at a Rubens painting, and it's just it's just all, it's very sensual. I mean, the body. Well, what's that, what's he, what's that called? Sorry, I want to look it up. A Rubens. So R U B. -E I shouldn't look it up. I guess Rubens. What would I type? Painting. Yeah, Rubens painting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. How they become yeah. more sensual. Well, I, let's. I, I don't want to put a pin in that. I do want to keep fleshing that out, but just kind of back up a little bit. You know, I suppose when we talk about, um, you know, pornography. You know, you, you could talk about it from different angles, right? Like there's the one who produces the pornography. There is the one who, quote unquote, performs in the pornography. Then you have the consumer, right? And I suppose, in fact, I would say it is it is the case that one can look at pornography and not sin because, you know, you we have these sort of police officers who have to say, look at images of child pornography in order to identify victims and catch these people. Mm -hmm. uh, or you might f have a, a mother, say, who accidentally stumbles upon what a child has been seeing and, and scrolls through to, to understand it. You know, I would say that this, because of the intention of the, the viewer watching pornography, while it may always be harmful to some degree, you, one isn't always culpable for it. Yeah. But, but I, um, and I suppose it's possible that someone could look, as you say, upon these Reuben paintings or even the icon of the breastfeeding Madonna and feel lust uh, and have their sexual, their, their, their sort of lower passion stirred up. Um, but I've always thought, I guess, that, you know, especially in regards to, the, say, the icon or even the Sistine Chapel, that the problem wasn't with the art. It wasn't with depicting the body, which is good. It, it's always been with the, the the person that there's a problem in the heart if I am to look upon something holy like the breastfeeding Madonna icon and feel lust that that's not a problem with the depiction it's it's the problems with with me but no I think you're I think you're on to I think you're on to the you're right in the in an absolute sense but I I, I still nonetheless think that it's a dangerous it's a yeah, dangerous see, I, I think uh, I see what you mean hill to slide because, down because at the very least like let's say one says you can depict the body in a responsible way, which I'm not. Uh, it sounds like you're leaning towards not necessarily after the after the garden, right? But it, but even if that were the case, um, there's the temptation of like leading people into sin because there are people who are seriously perverted, and so maybe maybe that's an argument for why you shouldn't just be having these <laughs> these naked images in churches. Um, I mean, I am definitely a traditional iconographer, so I don't advocate for the <laughs> naked people in churches. But it, sure. if you look at, for example, the way that nakedness is portrayed, like so I, I was trying as, I, we were, as we were talking, I was trying to think of other scenes where the saints are represented naked. And it mm. does it does happen. And it's usually uh, ascetics. Like ascetics are sometimes represented naked. Yeah, Mary uh, of Egypt. Yes, yeah, and Mary of Egypt is is sometimes represented naked in a way where she's an almost a skeleton. Yeah. Like she's a, she's a barely... She barely has any flesh on her, and so there is a way in, in which the nakedness of the ascetic is is also this weird place where scandal and glory come together. You know, like you can imagine when um, Saint Francis of Assisi would disrobe or ask his his Franciscans to disrobe uh, before the in public. Like it wasn't it was obviously not to entice their 
entice other people's sexual desire, but it was rather for the person to kind of descend into that shame of nakedness mm. in a way that would liberate them from the liberate them from that shame in a way. Yeah, I don't know of that particular story. Um, oh, that St. Francis would disrobe? I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard stories of, you know, people that maybe Francis rolling in the snow or these sorts of things to avoid temptation, but is it the case that Francis asked some of his brothers to actually strip naked? Yeah, well, Francis himself did it. And so Francis, when Francis kind of, uh, he started giving his father's money to uh, right. to build a church, and then they brought That's him right. in front of his so, father, so he and said, they said, from now on, our father who art in heaven, yeah. right? And so he took his, cl- he disrobed, and he gave his cloak to to his father, to the priest that was there. And But then he also asked some of his brothers to do the same at some points. And this probably doesn't mean undergarments, right, though? I'm sure he's not like... I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Because if that were the case, I mean, far be it from me to criticize a saint, but I'd be like, that doesn't seem cool, Francis. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> I guess I can see. Well, the holy Alicia, fools, yeah. the holy fools are capable of engaging in this kind of hmm. scandalous behavior, uh, but they take the consequences for it. But it's yeah. also it is this weird moment, like I said, where this strange moment where the 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 nakedness of Christ on the cross is both the nakedness of scandal and the the return to the garden at the same time. So I just really want to understand your argument. So forgive me for for going back to this. So is your argument? And maybe you haven't fully thought this through, so I'm not I'm not pressing right. you on it or anything. But it, it seems to be like prior to the fall, one could look upon another body and and see it in all of its glory and splendor, and without wanting to use the body. But since the time of we, we've left the garden, that's no longer possible, and so we shouldn't depict nudity in art. Well, I don't think we should depict it in a sensual manner. At least not. At least not in the church art. At least not. In no, church I agree. Art. But then, but I wouldn't consider like I wouldn't consider the 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 nudity in the Sistine Chapel to be sensual in any sense. Like I yeah. agree that that those Reuben paintings were sensual from what yeah. I saw. Um, so would you say though that you can depict nudity, um, in a non-sensual way that would be appropriate? Or are you kind I mean, of skeptical I think that, that people have done it on the with Christ on the cross forever, and so I mean, without without necessarily showing Christ's genitalia, that Christ is is ba- basically. But I would be open to that. I would be open to a beautiful icon sh- displaying Christ's genitalia, yeah. and I would see. I would. I would until this conversation would have thought that would have been appropriate or could be appropriate. <laughs> I don't know. I think that I I I'm not sure. I I get the sense that that one might be. Disclosing the disclosing the 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 secret in a way that might not be appropriate in the public, I would say something. Say it that way. Because he was crucified naked by, yes. by all accounts, right? I think that's probably so, he probably was completely naked. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is really fascinating. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.